Good morning, everyone. Vision is described as the ability to see, the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom and to imagine something. Today, in this month of International Women's Month, I'm very blessed to have with us a woman that I think had a big vision when she started her business. It's my pleasure to welcome in the studio today, Sonia Smith, founder and MD of Sonia Smith Funeral Group. Hello, Sonia. Good day, everyone, and thank you so much, Hanli, for the invitation. Sonia, tell us a bit about yourself and how you ended up in the funeral industry. I am 60-something, live in Centurion, and I strongly believe in second chances. I'm happily married to Rian Janse van Rensburg, who happens to be my financial planner, and we have three married children and three grandchildren whom I absolutely adore. In fact, if I knew how much fun grandchildren were, I would have had them first. <laughs> so I'd like to think <laughs> that I am a thought leader. It all started 25 years ago when I watched a carte blanche television program. And they covered a story on government mortuaries, also known as medico-legal laboratories. And today we refer to the lab as forensic pathology services. So I can clearly remember the images, you know, of the body trays and the tag on the toe. And um, after 24 years in this industry, 25 years actually now, I can really say that in life there is no greater mystery than death. And I had these visuals in my mind's eye where everything at a funeral home happens behind closed curtains. You know, it's not as if you ever visit a funeral home by choice. So we are in a grudge business. If something happens to someone, sad as it may be, something must happen. And you must have the opportunity to say your final goodbyes. We refer to it as the final disposition of the body. The human remains must either be buried or cremated. So in my previous life, I moved to KZN, where after a long-term relationship, my personal life unfortunately ended up in a misery. There was a vacancy at one of the bigger names in the death care industry, and the rest, as they say, is history. So that's where it all started, Anli. Dealing with people in the darkest times of their lives after losing a loved one made me forget about my own broken heart. And I really flourished. It's that bloom where you are planted kind of thing. Fantastic. Sonia, you know, these things happen for a reason. So when you started your company, what was the original vision you had for the company? Initially, to offer a very personalized, memorable funeral experience, to bring color into a very black and white and gray, gray male-orientated or male-dominated industry, and to make it my profession, instead of being a low-class undertaker that everyone looks down upon, there is this huge stigma, especially in South Africa, where people think if you cannot find a job, you end up becoming a funeral undertaker. So sometimes someone would walk into my office and then they would say very insensitive things like, I guess somebody has to do it, or oh. at least there are people like you. <laughs> I've traveled the world and I can honestly say that a funeral director overseas is a highly respected person. They are seen in the same light as company directors. So back to the original vision, to expand a boutique-style enterprise into a maximum of about 35 outlets countrywide. Wow, that is impressive. Um, Sonia, did you find it necessary to adjust or change the vision over the years? And uh, was the 12 branches you now have part of the original plan, or did you have to make changes to accommodate this growth in your business? From the beginning in 2006, I had the vision to expand the brand in order to obtain a national footprint. And I have decided on the franchise model. However, after attending a week-long franchise course in 2009, 
I just felt in my heart that I was not ready for the next move. So it was only six years later that I put on my big boots in 2015. Now I'm in the position that my biological clock is ticking. Mm -hmm. 60 something years old. So the last two offices of Sonia Smith Funeral Group were established in George and Mossel Bay over the last couple of months. The first across provincial borders, branches and franchise. So I renovated two buildings simultaneously, almost from scratch, lived in two provinces for a number of months in doing so. And to answer your question, I'm not sure if I will live long enough to leave a legacy of 35 offices countrywide. I would have liked to grow faster, but I suppose all in good time. Well, yes, all in good time. So I'm sure you've learned a lot of lessons um, over the time since you started the company. What are some of these lessons that you've learned? And then a second part to my question, um, would things have turned out differently if you had known about these things beforehand? Image. Image isn't everything. Image is everything. Your image is every aspect of how you portray yourself, including your visual appearance, how you communicate, how you behave, and even your digital impression. So brand image is important for every business. Your brand image must convey exactly what you want it to say. And then most definitely, I would not have tried to do everything myself. I am a bit of a control freak. And if accounting is not your thing, get yourself a professional accountant from the start. If you're not good at socializing and networking, get yourself a marketer. Never underestimate the power of social media. For many years, I managed the Sonia Smith Funeral Group main Facebook page all by myself. It can be very time consuming and it is a danger zone. I once made a very innocent post about suicide saying that suicide does not take the pain away. It gives it to someone else. Mm -hmm. I was taken to the cleaners about that post. People started giving me a one-star rating. Then they would say, remove your post and I will change the rating to a three. So Mm -hmm. I learned a very expensive lesson uh, on the topic of social media. Mm -hmm. So I would say always appoint your weakest link. After 17 years, it is still only me, myself, and I. And I think it would have been great to have a board of directors to support me in decision-making over the years, taking the business to the next level. We probably would have grown faster then. But at my age now, it's also very important to have a succession plan in place. Another lesson is to have your affairs in order. And I talk about this almost every day. Mm. Dealing with death on a daily basis means that I am confronted with my own mortality regularly. So, Hanley, my question to you is, do you have a life file? I actually do. Um, it's it's something that I've, you know, I, was, I received it at a function, but it's not really up to date. And I know that it's something that we all have to give attention to. Um, you know, we spoke off air just before and I told you about what happened a year ago in my life. And it's the the value of a file like that cannot be underestimated. And I think that is something that we can maybe address on another occasion is to take the yes. ladies through the importance, you know, and all the necessities and how, you know, how how we think it's little small things, but how important it is to have all of that um, up to date. And, and really, um, it's important to have it all done. Um, so, yes, Sonia, it's a, a work in progress. I do have, but it's not a perfect one. So, yeah, honey, the reason why I asked you that question is we, we should, every viewer should ask herself or himself, where are my core important documents kept? If you die today, where will your loved ones find your last will and testament, your ID copies? your marriage certificate, your divorce papers, your car registration papers, even your TV license. There's a list of 42 items that will be required by your executor after death. So now your family must mourn, they they are sad, they need to work through their grief, but at the same time, there's so much red tape 
that must be taken care of. You know, the mm. estate must be reported to the master of the Supreme Court and all these documents must be found. So everybody needs a life file, not just if you are sick, terminally ill, everyone should have a file called my life file. And yeah, where will they start looking? Um, in the ceiling, in the cellar, in the boot of the car, in the boxes, in the drawers. It's so easy. Just get yourself a live file, yeah. download the in you can even download the index from our website, Sonia Smith Dash Funerals, and you can thank me later. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much for waking us all up to that, um, the importance of a life file, Sonia. I really think it's something that we as women specifically need to take charge of. So listening to you now, I mean, sure you have advice for women that are starting up businesses because it's so different to the time when you started up. But what advice would you give a woman that wants to start not necessarily a funeral business, any business? What advice would you give her? Most definitely, you have to have the three Ps. Passion persistence and perseverance passion will make your vision a reality and then never ever give up always begin with the end in mind it will probably take a thousand days and many sleepless nights i can honestly say been there done that got the t-shirt and the scars mm -hmm. i started this business with less than two cents in the bank as in zero capital a borrowed second-hand Mercedes-Benz station wagon, which had to serve as a hearse, a collection vehicle. I borrowed a grave lowering device and three coffins on a consignment basis. And by growing in our marketing efforts, most definitely word of mouth, we have managed to, to grow over the last 17 years from 300 funerals a year to 1,300 funerals per year. And it's so rewarding to see how new entrepreneurs join our Sonia Smith family and how they become successful business owners in their own right. So people say your smile is your logo, your personality is your business card, but how you leave others feeling after an experience with you becomes your trademark. Wow, that's powerful. I think you must just repeat that again. That was really the, the last three that you said from the smile. That's very powerful. Your smile is your logo. Your personality is your business card. But how you leave others feeling after an experience with you becomes your trademark. That's beautiful, Sonia. That's really, really beautiful. So you are a woman that have won many, many awards. I looked at the list and it's too many to name on this, um, but it is part of your CV that will show. So what do you think gave you the edge in business? I think being dynamically different, I had this urge to do things differently. Anybody can do a funeral, but if you can make it so personal and, and be um, sincere, not false empathy or sympathy, then I think you will go very far in this industry. And also being a woman in the death care industry, I think it does give me a bit of a competitive advantage, you know, to add a feminine touch and finesse at the service. Maybe having a name that sounds soft and gentle on the ear counts in, in my advantage. I also did a lot of community involvement. I really believe in giving back to the community who support me. Mm -hmm. So I've been associated with Alzheimer's projects, multi-sensory rooms, activity aprons, and also, I'm regularly invited to speak at events where we have these courageous conversations surrounding death. It was always this hush-hush subject, but then COVID hit us. Mm -hmm. The COVID pandemic was really an eye-opener. And we find that people now are much more open to talk about death, which is why I love to talk at these death cafes, which is a worldwide phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And it is a platform where we talk informally over tea and, tea and cake about death. I haven't heard of that. That's very interesting. So does it actually? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, no. I just want to say, do we have that in in our area? I mean, how often do you do that in in Centurion, for instance? Or yes, there will be another one coming up in May, presented by the Centurion Hospice, and um, I plan to have one in the Southern Cape as well very soon. 
Oh, that's fantastic. Sonia, but you're not a woman that shies away from difficult topics. That that we know. And, and so it's, it's, it comes as no surprise that you address the, these kind of issues. Tell us a bit about the constitutional court action and how that changed the world for parents of stillborn babies. This is a topic very close to my heart, Hanley. When you suffer pregnancy loss before 26 weeks of gestation, it is referred to as a miscarriage. And after 26 weeks, which is about six and a half months during the pregnancy, we talk about a stillbirth. So way back in 2005, I received a call from a hospital to collect a set of triplets who sadly mm -hmm. died shortly after birth. Upon my arrival to collect them, they were no longer there. And I was so shocked at the time. And I said, but how is this possible? You called me to come and fetch them. Where are they? And the nursing member said, there goes the medical waste truck. They are on their way to be incinerated. And I was horrified. It was the first time that I came across these, this legal dilemma. I, at first, I thought it was inhumane laws in this country. And it really haunted me for years. So, of course, I didn't leave it there. I just couldn't. In fact, I kicked up such a fuss in the hospital that the unit manager got into a car, drove off to the medical waste plant, mm. and she found these three little bodies. So I was able to give them a dignified send-off. My daughter then subsequently suffered a miscarriage, and I was at the other side of the table at a loss of words. I didn't know what to say to my own daughter. And that's when I said, Nikki, Somebody has to do something about it. And I realized I'm somebody. So I'm so thankful that that was planted in my heart to, to bring this into the light because we've opened the floor for bereaved parents going forward to not have this suffering and see how they put your baby in a red bag into a red bucket to be incinerated. So yeah, it, it was quite an intense court case uh, we ended up in the high court where the judge ruled in our favor and mm -hmm. then the matter had to be referred to the constitutional court for ratification. So it was all about the human rights of the parents, not having the right to elect to bury what you already perceive to be your child mm -hmm. and how other people can make these decisions on your behalf. Then it had a very interesting twist at the constitutional court where the judges unanimously ruled that the law is actually silent about this. There is no law prohibiting you or restricting you to elect to bury your baby. The only concern might be municipal bylaws at some towns or cities, which I am not aware of. So if anyone now suffers pregnancy loss, irrespective of the stage of gestation, this court case is there as a case, case law to help them to, to inform hospital, the hospital fraternity, the legal fraternity, that this matter has been, the, the constitution has been challenged in court and this was the outcome. That's fantastic. So it's a very long story. It stretched over seven years, wow. the legal battle alone. But I mean, it's a good good outcome for many parents because it's nowadays um, it's more common that you hear you know because people live different lives and there's stress and lots of people lose that little baby um, in unfortunate circumstances. So that's a fantastic outcome really for the parents of of those unfortunate children. You it's work only sorry, it's one in four pregnancies that end up in a miscarriage. It's amazing. Wow, Sonia. You work in a very env um, emotional environment. And how do you keep going? How do you balance work life um, so that you don't lose it, you know, at the wrong time, get emotional with your clients? Being in the death care industry, it's not just a business. It's a lifestyle. So having a family dinner on Christmas Eve can easily be interrupted with a phone call because death does not make an appointment. My mother has recently suffered a massive stroke and I had to drop everything, get onto an airplane as fast as I could. And it, it has really been the worst time of my life. But I just realized once again how important family time is. Tomorrow is not guaranteed to anyone. 
So I have a very supporting husband who really gives me wings and I love spending time with my grandchildren and I play bowls socially. Oh, that's nice. So if you could start over, Sonia, and have any other business, what would it be and why? Most definitely a funeral home. I believe it is my calling in life. Every phone call every day is unique and different. We deal with natural deaths, cancer, heart attacks, sick people, and in the most difficult ca- most difficult cases, death by murder, suicide, death of a child, miscarriage, stillbirth. It really is is just so rewarding, yeah, to be there for someone who suffer a loss in the family. Yeah, I think you you need to be born for this business. I don't think, you know, every one of us have um, that kind of compassion. So what is your vision for your business for the next 10 years? It's difficult to get anywhere if you don't even know which direction you are going. So I think to grow and achieve more than just staying in business over the next 10 years and to differentiate our brand from competitors, to always be relevant in our clients' lives, to inspire our team, or let me rather say, to inspire my team and keep them focused. Mm. And then most of all, I think to make smarter decisions. Wow, Sonia, that was awesome. Thank you very much for your time this morning. I know that in your business, um, you know, I, I said to Sonia, when we set this up, we all know we're going to need you. We just don't know when. And you don't know when we're going to need you. But um, thank you very much for sharing the insights with us on, on a success story. Something that started with a dream, I think, from your side and with a vision and a passion. And that you've really built out to, to be one of the success stories um, of, of women in business. And we are blessed that you are uh, one of the ladies that we can associate with and strive to um, to mirror almost the you know the the um, prestige that you have in your business, is there any message that you would like to leave the ladies with um, during this month where it's Women's Month and everyone needs to look after themselves and we focus on vision? So maybe you have a parting message for all. I think it's important to write down that vision and to live by it every day, even if it's step by step, one day at a time. Just get closer to that vision and plan accordingly. And then tongue in the cheek, Hanley, if I may, I'll be the last one to let you down. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you very much, Sonia. We want to wish you all of the very best. Um, You know, growing a business is always tough. We all know that. And I think um, in these times, it's uh, switched around a bit for maybe people in the funeral business, especially with, with COVID. Maybe that was the the rain, rainy season for the industry and and you guys certainly had to deal with a lot of other people's loss but it was a good for business and now the challenge ahead is to maintain the growth that you've seen so we want to wish you everything of the very best and we'll definitely connect with you again on the life file and the importance thereof i think it's something that we need to share with all our ladies in business thank you very much thank you have a good day thanks Well, ladies, that's it from us. We hope you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions for Sonia, you can always reach out to her on her website or get in touch with us at admin at sacbw.co.za and we'll gladly put you in contact with her. Thank you very much. 